Hi, and welcome to this introductory video on arithmetic and geometric sequences, brought to you by the Answer Series. There are some very easy things that we're going to do at the start. So I want you to pause the video, try the first few questions on your own, and then I will go through them with you. To start with, it's very obvious that the first term in each sequence is equal to 2. To find subsequent terms in an arithmetic sequence, we can see that we simply have to add 3 because this is a very familiar linear pattern going with a different name. The geometric sequence, perhaps not so obvious, so you may have to just pause and think a little bit about this one again. But the numbers are growing quickly, and if you look at 6, it is 3 times the size of 2. And if you look at 18, it is three times the size of six. So to generate this particular sequence, we are simply multiplying the preceding term by three. The common difference in an arithmetic sequence is what causes this to be a linear pattern. And the common ratio in a geometric sequence is what alerts us to the fact that we are working with a geometric sequence. So if you try to decide which pattern you're working with, you subtract terms, so if you take B, which is the second term, and A, which is the first term in this general sequence, if you subtract B minus A and then compare that result with C minus B, if those answers are the same, then you know that you have an arithmetic sequence with a common difference. Now, the logic for geometric sequence is similar, but the calculation is different. So what we're going to do with a geometric sequence is take the second term, which is B, and divided by the first term, and then we're going to compare that result with the third term divided by the second term. And if we consistently get the same answer, what we are finding is a common ratio, and we have a geometric sequence. Pause the video and see if you can work out the answers to these three questions. There are two ways to find the fourth term, and really obvious, easy way. You simply take the value of the third term, which you know is 8, add 3, and you have 11. The problem here is that if you want now to work out the 10th term or the 20th term or the 100th term, you need the preceding term. So we need a better method. And the method basically takes into account that there are a certain number of differences that come into play for each term. So with the fourth term, you're going to take into account the fact that you have the first term value and one less difference than the position. So the fourth term is the first term plus three differences added on, which gives you this value of 11. When you then get to the 10th term, you simply have to take note of the first term and nine differences, which gives you the result you need. Again, very different, but similar in terms of logic. For a geometric sequence, you can take the preceding term, as we're doing working, to work out the fourth term, and just multiply by 3 to get 54. But that's limiting in terms of its long-term helpfulness. So you need to understand how the fourth term is comprised. And so to do that, we break it down into the threes that we've been multiplying through by. And you notice quite quickly that what arithmetic and geometric sequences have in common is the relationship between the number of ratios in this case, and the position of the term. If we take the fourth term and we multiply the first term by 3 to the power of 3, we get the result we're looking for. So now, to take that to the tenth term, we are going to use a power of 9. So the tenth term is 2 times 3 to the power of 9, which gives us a massive answer. Pause the video and see if you can work out the 20th term for each sequence, and then see if you can derive a formula for each sequence. Working now with the 20th term of each sequence, we can see that for the 20th term, we are working with 19 common differences for the arithmetic sequence. For the geometric sequence, for the 20th term, we are working with 19 ratios. So, Going back, the arithmetic sequence, T20, is 2, which is the first term value, plus 19 times the common difference to give us 59. The geometric sequence, the 20th term, is 2, which is the first term, multiplied by the ratio to the power of 19. 
taking this to the general formula for each of these sequences, the nth term for an arithmetic sequence is the first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference, and simplified in this situation gives us 3n minus 1. Working instead with the geometric sequence, the nth term is generated by taking the first term and multiplying that by the ratio raised to the power of n minus 1. Notice that in both sequences, the difference between the position of the term and the amount that we are using in terms of the common differences, there's one less common difference than the position, and with the ratio, there's one less ratio than the position. It is also very important to note when you are simplifying a geometric sequence that you may not take the common ratio, which is 3, and the first term, which is 2, and multiply them because only the common ratio is raised to this power of n minus 1. So if you were to multiply the 2 and the 3 to get 6, you would be completely distorting the answer and it would be regarded as a very serious error. We're going to just briefly talk about how we can explain what we're doing in general terms because we won't always have values in front of us. So the difference can be defined as the nth term minus the n minus first term. And what that is saying in theory is that you can take any term and subtract the term that comes just before it. So in other words, t5 minus t4 to find out the common difference. To find out the common ratio, you can take any term and divide by the preceding term. So a quick reminder again, a is the value of the first term, n is the position of the term with a value of tn, tn on the other hand is the value of the nth term. Using only the values of a, d and r, see if you can complete all the missing values in this slide. Starting with a, the second term will be a plus 1 difference. The third term will have two differences added on. The fourth term, three differences. The term in position k will simply have k minus 1 differences added on. And the term in position n will have n minus 1 differences added. Using the exact same logic for the geometric sequence, the first term is just a. The second term has a ratio to the power of 1. Third term, ratio to the power of 2. Fourth term, ratio to the power of 3. Term k, ratio to the power of k minus 1. And term n, ratio to the power of n minus 1. We are going to conclude this video with an example that brings the two sequences together in a very nice way. It's a challenging question, but I do want you to pause the video and try it on your own before I go through it with you. The first thing you need to do, having read the question carefully, is separate out the sequence. So you do not have four terms that form a pattern. You have four terms of which the first three form an arithmetic sequence, and then the last three form a geometric sequence. So you need to separate that out from the start. Now go to the definition, and using the fact that you know the first three terms in your arithmetic sequence, you can subtract the terms, second minus first and third minus second, and set up an equation with y as the subject equal to 2x minus 4. That means that you have one equation now with two variables, and you know you can't solve that. So you go back to your geometric pattern and you work out your ratio in terms of x and y. So you take the second term divided by the first term, then you take the third term divided by the second term, and you work out the equation that that gives you. If you're not afraid of squaring and you do want to avoid fractions, then this is the method for you. So with this method, we can avoid substituting fractions, but we do need to know how to square. So you substitute carefully your y value which you worked out in place of the y value in the ratio result. Work out your quadratic equation, put it into standard form, factorize it and work out your two x values. Each x value will generate a partner y value, so you can't randomly pair things off. When x equals 0, 0,5, y will equal negative 3. On the other hand, when x equals 8, y will equal 12. All right, so that's the first method where you were able to avoid using fractions and were comfortable using a squaring system. Second option is very similar, so I'm not going to go through 
much of it with you, just to point out that this option allows you to avoid squaring, but requires you to be more confident with fractions. So it starts out in a very similar way, but instead of making y the subject, we now have x as the subject. That means that we can substitute without having to square. We eliminate the x value from the equation. The fraction disappears very quickly because we're multiplying that substituted value by 18. We get a completely different trinomial because we're solving for y. We get the two y values first this time, and we take minus 3, substituted into the original expression to work out x, and again we substitute 12 to get 8. Now at this stage the question is finished, but I would like you to understand it a little better. So in this slide, I want you simply to pause the slide and to check the details. So you will notice that when you use 0, 0,5 for x and minus 3 for y, you can check that your arithmetic sequence does in fact give you a common difference of minus 3,5 and your geometric sequence gives you r equal to negative 6. If you take the different option of x equal to 8 and y equal to 12, you generate sequences with a difference of 4 and a ratio of 1,5. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and I hope that you are looking forward to finding out more about both arithmetic and geometric sequences. Thank you for watching this video, brought to you by the Answer Series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.